Well, I gotta say, the palace is definitely looking really good from the backside now. Yes, indeedy, it sure is. Just between you and me, though, the front side still could use just a little work. Greetings YouTube, DJ Bonebreaker here for episode 21 of the Wakamole Chronicles. And as you can tell, I've already got started building the uh, Alkali Palace. And I've demolished the library and the uh, butcher shop, all that's left is fence over here. And more or less moved them to these like wings on the palace. And I turned that large house into this one. And of course the most important room of the palace is done, namely my bedroom. Just gotta love my extra fancy bed here. Yeah, I always kind of wanted a big old fancy canopy bed. But anyways, I digress. So what I've done with the uh, main section here is upstairs in my fancy bedroom with some extra storage. And down here is where I got all my smelters and anvil and brewing station and, you know, water source for the brewing station, some more storage for, like, smelly stuff. <laughs> now, as you can see, I've actually started working on the front area here. Now, the idea that I had, since I had this, you know, yeah, and I had to demolish and move this pumpkin farm, like, three times. And I even built these, both these entire wings on the side of the palace. And then decided, oh, originally they were over like here. And I was like, oh, maybe this uh, stairway would look better if, and everything would work better if it was five blocks wide instead of three blocks wide. So I had to demolish both those entire towers down to the ground, more or less, move them over two blocks and then rebuild them. But, I like how it looks so far. Now, the plan for the front part, or at least part of it, and I'm gonna start working on that right here now, as soon as I unhitch Mr. Horse. And then rehitch Mr. Horse over here so he's kind of out of the way. But the idea is, is I'm going to be clearing this entire mound back to right along here and along this thing. So this was going to have where that, you know, that current filled in doorway is. It's going to have another one of these entrance portals on it like that. So without further ado, let's get cracking and see how that looks. One hour later. <laughs> And as you can see, we've just about got this uh, doorway here finished. I mean, there's still some sand I need to clear out from the front, and yeah, I need to finish reducing the rest of this pile, but it's mostly done. Now, the idea that I have, once I get this, you know, cleared out and filled in with uh, dirt instead of sand, is I want to have along this section right here be like, um, we, like a wall for courtyard, but more like an archway type wall, if you know what I mean. And then have like some kind of like gatehouse or something like right here at the entrance of the palace. But we'll see how that works out in a bit. In the meantime, I need to finish up this. Two hours later. Okay, now that we've got this particular section done, I think it looks really good. Well, done aside from this um, armorer here, we decided she wants to camp out inside the uh, 
last hole here, so I can't finish adding a third, that is. But yeah, I think this part of the palace is now done. At least from this bit over. Still needed to replace this, like, you know, section here with this uh, black and white tiling for the uh, center section, and then more or less duplicate the same thing over on this side, which will require me to move these uh, wheat fields here. But yeah, this palace is definitely starting to shape up. Oh good, I can finish this now. And yes, you might have heard in the background, but my chicken farm has been working quite well lately. As a matter of fact, I've got like four stacks of, well, I just recently emptied the uh, chest here, but I've gotten like three stacks of cooked chicken and like six stacks of feathers from it, I believe. No, sorry. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Almost ten stacks of feathers and six stacks of cooked chicken. So yeah, that automatic chicken farm definitely something I should have built a long time ago in this particular world. Uh, music to my ears. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, these. I'm just going to give you a quick uh, rundown of what all this is. Like I said, these are two wings on the side. They're originally more or less the uh, butcher shop and library, but I dismantled and you know, moved and stuff, just like I did with the big house. This section here is actually directly below the uh, stairs going up in the back and the pathway between the two upper parts of the, the two wings and this is actually going to be going down it's going to be three wide stairs going down into the basement which will have the entrance to the mines well the mine shaft which will hopefully get us to the stronghold for the end portal soon and of course to keep my loyal citizens of Alkali here from wandering into the mines and you know hurting themselves I'm going to be installing iron doors here as a matter of fact I think I might just go ahead and do that right now since I have a surp actually I already have the iron doors I need already made so yeah that definitely helps out a bit and then I'll just go install those and install some buttons so let these uh, villagers know that this area is off limits for unauthorized personnel. And of course have the exact same kind of stairway going down to the central room. They'll be directly beneath this room in the basement. And that'll be their basement, which I'm thinking about is where I might put the enchanting ta table and like all the bookshelves and stuff. But we'll see. In the meantime, I need to make sure I can actually get into the uh, construction site for the basement. So I'll just do that. <laughs> but yeah, this is, like I said, the main room here. And this is supposed to be like kind of a somewhat grand entry hall for, you know, the whole thing. Plus a nice way I can, you know, go to different rooms in the palace without having to go outside and go up one of the stairs up there and then climb back down, so, yeah. And of course this is going to lead to that archway area, so I'm going to try to kind of lay that out here, how that's going to work in a little bit. So I'll see you guys when I've kind of got some idea of that done. Six hours later. So yeah, after some uh, messing around and having to deal with a couple of zombies, that, well, a zombie that spawned inside of our, well, technically it was a husk, but anyways, it spawned over in that area because there weren't enough torches which is an issue I addressed. I've come up with a design I think will actually work. So we'll have this like single arched, like, you know, 
archway going into like a small courtyard and then we'll have two corner towers like right here which I'm gonna have to move this roadway back or maybe even make it turn off like right here yeah I can make the roadway turn right here and then go into the main entrance but that's gonna be for future next major project though at least from this point, or at least for now, is I want to demolish both of these wheat fields, move them down to the lower level, close to where the other wheat fields are, or maybe like right down at the bottom of the stairs, and then complete the, you know, left wing of the palace here, or right wing, depending on which way you're facing. So, without further ado, Let's get started on that. Yeah, I kind of ran out of stone, so I need to run the old stone generator. But hopefully I'll have that wind done soon. Oh yeah, we've somehow got an iron golem inside this house. I'm guessing he spawned there, but still, that's kind of... Funny. Three days later. Okay, this wing is now completed. Well, there's some work needs to be done with the flooring in the hallway, but that can wait until later. For right now, what I want to do is you see how I've excavated this area here? Well, I'm planning on turning this into a farm field. It'll also serve as a decorative garden. And it'll be all nice and perfectly square too. It'll be the same size as the, uh, well, a little bit bigger actually than these farm plots because these farm plots are seven by nine. This one's going to be nine by nine. Or, oh wait, no, it's going to be seven by nine too. I forgot. <laughs> You see, what I'm putting here is a sugarcane farm. And I want this sugarcane farm to be able to farm, let's see, four times seven. Actually, no, it'll be eight times seven, which is 56. So not quite a full stack for each of these fields. Okay, never mind. It is going to be 9x9. Nine nine. So I'm going to be adding our water source blocks in through here. And they're going to end up being covered up by uh, these stone half slabs here. Yeah, one of the things that I really need to establish from the get-go in this town, but I've been distracted with other things like the stone generator and the chicken farm. And just, you know, renovating some of these dilapidated buildings and, well, fortifying it, granted, was a higher priority because, well, even now with the, uh, you know, everything built up, there's still zombies spawning occasionally in this uh, town, which is not good. But I think I finally got all of the uh, zombie issues taken care of. But I suppose we'll see once we get, you know, everything built and in place and all that. So yeah, this is our shirt cane plot. And I'm going to do another one identically on the other side too. But let me see how much sugar can I manage to gather up. And it helped if I had some space in my inventory, so let's give her some of the sand. Yeah, that's one thing this uh, whole town renovation project definitely 
has uh, given me virtually a bottomless supply of sand for whatever purposes. Maybe I should start the Alkali Glass Works. And hello, Mr. Zombie. You know what? That husk, I'm going to kill him with kindness. Yes, a skeleton dropped an unbreaking three mending enchanted bow that was almost broke, so I combined it with my power four flame bow. And I decided the bow that this was this OP and epic deserved a name, so I decided to name it Kindness. So you, Mr. Zombie, I'm going to kill with kindness. See, I killed him with kindness. <laughs> Yeah, the best part about this bow is, and it's going to be the bow that I'll be taking the Ender Dragon fight, because even though I still have to use arrows, but I have more than enough materials to craft like eight stacks of arrows, but as long as I can get uh, XP from the mobs I kill, this bow's never going to break. So it's like an endless bow. Now it would even be better if I could get a power, another power four, like enchanted book, and combine it to make it power five. But that might be a little bit of overkill there. And it looks like we might actually have enough sugar cane to actually fill this entire. Nope. <laughs> oh well. That's the way it goes sometimes. But at least we've got our sugarcane plot started. I mean, I know this isn't exactly the most efficient plot, but aesthetically speaking, it kind of fits in with the, my general odd spaced architecture much better than a wide one would. So, yeah. And here's one sugar cane plot slash garden. And then of course I need to rebuild the wheat fields that I destroyed over here. And I'll be using the exact same method here with the maximum efficiency, sub well maximum efficiency for seven by seven wheat fields. We just have one water source block that irrigates the entire thing. So I'm thinking I might put those wheat fields like right here or maybe kind of like yeah I'm gonna put them up against this wall here so that way I have room to build maybe a house or two in here so let's put in this wheat field real quick alright our fields are just about done here Just need to take my diamond hoe and plow them out. And you know, I think I'm gonna be nice to the villagers and even plant them with seeds. So that, you know, since you know, I already swiped all the crops from the fields that I uh, demolished. And yes, I am trying to get that stupid achievement with the uh, diamond hoe. The one that requires you to actually break one. I've been using farming with this diamond hoe for like the entire series here at the walk of the uh, Wakamole Chronicles, and I still haven't broken it yet. So, <laughs> uh, well, I guess that's gonna take a while. Many months later. Okay, now that we've got the. Uh, the boundary of our other sugarcane farm laid out. Time to remove all this grass and replace it with sand because personally I think the sand looks really good for like a sugarcane farm. I don't know why, it gives a little bit of contrast plus it lets us save some of our dirt and you know, use it elsewhere because I just realized we're going to have to replace a lot of sand Considering, you know, we'll be demolishing this building here and probably moving it a bit. But, yeah. That's going to be for after we get this palace done. In the meantime, we're just going to throw down some sand like this. 
to throw down some more sand like that. And then start uh, filling in the water channels. And use our water, you know, supply for the uh, stone generator. Help get that started. And since we don't have, well, I mean, we could use these torches for placing slabs over the center one. Oh, we can use, also use a torch for that too. I forgot I had torches in the center too. Mainly because I don't know how these zombies keep spawning in town, but... I'm almost wondering if maybe it isn't trying to start like a zombie siege or something. I don't know. But we're almost out of time. However, there is exactly one more thing I want to do while after I harvest these reeds here. I mean, sugarcane here. And finish planting this farm and get the other farm well started. I want to finish up with the. Uh, upper part of the palace. Or what I meant mean to say is, hey, the village population starting to increase. Finally, I guess these two doors that I put in over here finally uh, gave enough houses for the village population to start increasing. But anyways, what I want to do is I want to Stop falling down this pit here. <laughs> but no, what I want to do is I want to put in some things over here. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see. Yeah, we should be able to see that uh, circle stone brick at the corner. So we'll put circle stone brick right here. And then let's see, can we get away with doing every three blocks? No, we're gonna have to do it. Yeah, right there. Which should work quite nicely. But yeah, we're gonna mark out where the uh, front of the uh, center portion of the palace is going to be. And could you please move, Miss? Thank you. And we've got a kid hanging out in the construction site. Hey, kid, you know that's dangerous, don't you? Yeah, you, you really shouldn't be playing in the middle of a construction site. It's not conducive to you actually growing up, you know what I'm saying? Of course, this configuration poses own unique challenges. But I mean, if it didn't have challenges, then it. Oh, I know. Yeah, okay, we'll place those close to the center. And, kid, could you please get out of the way of the construction site because I kind of need to finish that off before I can end this episode. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to remove this earlier design that I was kind of messing around with and replace it with the uh, andesite and the polished andesite, I should say, the polished diorite blocks that I'm using for the tiles. Of course, one of the things I'm really looking forward to in 1.14 is the fact that you can actually make 
polished and you know polished anesthetic, polished granite, polished diorite slabs. So that way I could you know save a buttload of materials you know with building these floors. Plus I could actually use uh, granite for more more than just you know filler builds because you know I could actually use it for creating some interesting shapes in and of itself. Like for instance, um, let me see if I can get a good vantage point here so you can see them better. Like these domes here, I could actually have made those domes out of polished granite or polished andesite or polished diorite instead of just you know sandstone. Although I actually rather like how the sandstone turned out. Of course, if I was playing this in 1.13. I could have made these domes out of uh, prismarine bricks and prismarine brick slabs, which would have looked really awesome. It looked like, I mean, I think that would have really looked like those, you know, some of those Arabian style domed roofs where they have the uh, turquoise colored tiles all over them. Okay, and now that we've got this entire like balcony section finished, I think this is where I'm going to end the episode, even though I would have liked to build the other, like, you know, archway section connecting, like, you know, for this like little courtyard I want to have. The thing is, is that even with, you know, cutting out a lot of stuff, this entire episode's already run way too long, so I'm going to see about trying to finish up the palace construction segment next episode. But until then, this is DJ Bonebreaker signing off. <laughs>